Let's talk about plants, specifically flowering plants, also known as angiosperms. Why? Well, it's important to remember that angiosperms help maintain the oxygen content of the Earth's atmosphere, and that agriculture is almost entirely dependent on them. Angiosperms are also routinely used in scientific research as they make great model organisms, one being Arabidopsis thaliana, a small flowering plant which is studied due to its small size and rapid life cycle. Now, we're going to talk about a paper that was published in 1990 that used Arabidopsis to clone and characterize a certain gene, named Agamis. Firstly, Arabidopsis produces typical mustard flowers, which contain four concentric worlds of organs. These mustard flowers characteristically have four green sepals, four white petals, two short and four long stamens, which are the male reproductive organs, and finally, two fused carpels, which are the female reproductive organs. In 1990, flower development was not well understood. However, it was known that mutations in certain genes could induce transformations in floral development. One of these genes was agamis, as agamis mutants produced flowers without any carpels or stamens. These stamens were converted into petals, and the carpels were converted into a new flower, producing a double flower phenotype. This mutant was known as AG1. Thus, the researchers set forth to clone and characterize the agamis gene to help elucidate how it affected floral morphogenesis. Firstly, they had to recreate the agamis mutant, and this was done via insertional mutagenesis. This was facilitated by agrobacterium, a bacteria which contains a tumor-inducing plasmid. Agrobacterium exploit plants by transferring DNA from the TI plasmid to the plant. This transfer DNA, or tDNA, integrates into the plant's genome, and encodes for food for the bacteria, whereas it causes disease in the plants, similar to how mosquitoes exploit us for food and can harm us by infecting us with diseases. In our case, the tDNA was inserted into the Arabidopsis genome, and the sensational mutant had the same phenotype as the AG1 mutant. Thus, it was likely that the tDNA had inserted in or near the agamis gene, but they had to confirm this via crossing the insertional mutant with the AG1 mutant. If the gene affected by the tDNA insertion was an allele of agamis, then 25% of the progeny would have the mutant phenotype, as the mutations are recessive. This was the case. Thus, AG1 and the insertional mutant were allelic, and the insertional mutant was dubbed AG2. Consequently, a plasmid rescue was performed. Since the tDNA contains a Sally restriction site, by performing a Sally digest, we can excise a portion of the Arabidopsis DNA that is flanking the tDNA, as the digest will cut the next Sally site in the Arabidopsis genome. The resulting sequence could then circularize, and was named PKIT505. PKIT505 was then used as a molecular probe to screen a cosmid library of wild-type Arabidopsis sequences for complementarity. One cosmid, named PKIT540, was complementary to plasmid PKIT505. When this cosmid was introduced into a homozygous AG2 mutant, it rescued the original phenotype. This confirmed that the region flanking the tDNA was indeed the wild-type agamis gene. Now, they knew where agamis was located, but they needed to sequence it. This was done again by screening a genetic library. This time, the probes used were restriction fragments spanning the tDNA insertion site. These probes were used to screen a cDNA library until a match was found. Only one class of cDNA clones spanned the tDNA insertion site, and they were consequently sequenced. Thus, the nucleotide sequence of agamis cDNAs was determined, of which the amino acid sequence of the open reading frame could be deduced. Finally, the agamis sequence was compared to other protein sequences. The agamis protein was highly similar to a class of transcription factors found in humans and yeast. Thus, due to the sequence similarity and the phenotype of AG mutants, the researchers proposed that agamis was a transcription factor, integral to regulating genes involved in salmon and carpal development. After the paper was published, one of its authors, Elliot Mayowitz, continued to analyze homeotic genes involved in flower development. He created double and triple mutants with agamis and other known homeotic genes, and through this was able to formulate the ABC model of flower development. This model is based upon how distinct organ identities are specified by combinations of homeotic A, B, and C genes, and can thus predict organ specification in developing flowers. The model not only improved our understanding of flower development, but has significant agricultural implications as well. The better we understand plant genetics, the better we can predictively model plant development, and the better we can specifically breed plants for size, growth rate, and yield. In a world with a rising population, less agricultural land, and decreased yields with climate change, the better we understand plant genetics, the better off we will be.